But before we get into the magic that's about to unfold in the Sahara, let's rewind to the start of the day as we're preparing to leave Zagora. The hours by car to drive, but back in the day, they did it in 52 days and it's about 3,000 kilometers. They're doing 60 kilometers a day on the back of the camel. It's a long, long ride. Is that right? That's right, that's true. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I'd, re I'd researched that. Yeah. I'd looked that up. Well done, guys. Yeah. Welcome to Shu and Anastasia's adventures in Morocco. We are on our way to the Sahara. We're going to be staying overnight and we're going to have a three hour four by four ride and then a one hour couple ride. But guys, you've got like the best outfits today. Hamid, you win the best outfit award today. <laughs> I am. Uh, I won uh, the best outfit uh, for today. Yeah, because yes. uh, Lachsen always does every day, but today I beat him. Whee! Yeah. Beat you. We stopped off at a small village called Tamagrut to learn more about its unique ceramic pottery, and we also visited a library filled with over 4,000 ancient manuscripts. We weren't allowed to take any pictures or videos, but we were taught how to make a wish there. Yeah, to make a wish. Top left is women's, top right is male, then it's girls and boys, so depending on where you are in life. Knock it at least three times and then you make a wish <laughs> on that window. And then you do this. We hopped back in our bus, sang some more karaoke, and we arrived at a 400 year old house for a traditional Moroccan lunch. It was a beautiful setting and it was actually one of my favorite and most memorable meals of the trip. This house, as he says, it's 400 years old. Wow. wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. So I was like, as you curious about how we make tea, mean tea in Morocco, so uh, I will show you. The Moroccans, they couldn't, they couldn't live without three things, sugar, bread, and olive oil and now it's tea. We're lucky to have Hamid because making Moroccan tea is no easy feat and it can be a lengthy process. It involves boiling the gunpowder tea leaves for several rounds before adding fresh mint leaves and a lot of sugar into the mix. It's then filtered out a few more times before it can be served to guests. It's well worth the wait though. Laksan and Hamid also demonstrated how to drink tea like a Moroccan and it's harder than it looks. Aha. That's the Moroccan way. This is, the, you know, if you sit with Moroccans and they drink tea, <laughs> you, would, you would not like it. <sighs> this is uh, bread, soft flour, compared to the, the soft fluffiness of the clouds. It's like a little bit of heaven. Soft flour. <laughs> what? Oh my god. That's what I'm they good. do. Yeah. Wow. Wow, this is nice. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, oh what's this one? Omelette. Omelette. This is the use of soft flour. <laughs> is this made of soft flour? It's made of no, delicate flour. eggs and <gasps> got some Berber omelettes here. Lovingly frying from wedding, the heavens eh? above. <laughs> Those the are my words. Above. They were literally right. my words. Got some onions inside, some spices, some herbs. Oh, it's actually one of the best omelette I've had because I don't really like omelette. We start with the bread and we eat like this. Ah, Duncan. You see? Hey, I had already figured that out. No, no, it's about you. You are Moroccan. Lamb, good. Omelette, good. Meat, good. We spent the rest of our lunch being serenaded by Moroccan instruments and we ended up all joining in singing and dancing with whatever cutlery we had around us. Hamid then decided to take it one step further with a solo debut. Carl was a bit confused, but he decided to join in with a guitar. Is this love? Is this love? Is this heat? Is the heat? Is the heat? And so it begins. 
Okay, now we're all fed and happy, it's time to head over to the Sahara. We jumped into a 4x4 and we started our bumpy three hour journey across the stony Hamada Desert. Turns out our route ran parallel to the Algerian border too. <laughs> We've been on the road for an hour and a half and now we have stopped off to stretch our legs. We are literally in the middle of the Sahara Desert right now. This stops in the middle of the desert and it's manned by the nomadic people. They've got a well for fresh and cooling water, Moroccan tea brewing and little souvenirs available for purchase. We are just arriving in our camp and our camels are all there. Our camp is just over here. Wow! Whoa. This is so cool! So guys, we're just laying down all the rugs for us later. This is honestly like the most incredible thing I've experienced. Two of you please, two here. This is our tent. We've got light up here and three beds. So we can have a little sleepover tonight. We've got our door closed because we're going to change for the camel ride. So the best thing to do is to wear something that's pretty loose because especially I don't wear shorts either. That will expose bare legs and skinny jeans because apparently when you ride the camel, your um, jeans will like ride up against you and it's just not very, very comfortable. So you want something that's loose that reflect the heat. So I've got some of my quilt. Also not wearing sandals because obviously if your sandal gets lost in the sand, can't really ask the camel to break. This yeah. is honestly surreal to be in the middle of the Sahara Desert. This is literally going to be like something we're going to tell our grandkids about when we're old. What yeah. experience. Now this is sushi. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's not the food. Eh? I'm talking about sushi, okay? <laughs> Put this like this. I need to, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at sushi. She is not sushi anymore. She looks no. like mushi. <laughs> What is Mushi in English? <laughs> mushi is like yeah. the dragon from Mulan, no? Really? Yeah. Sushi. sushi. We are preparing for the camera ride. Make sure to buy scarves before you come. Not before you come to Morocco, but before you come to the Sahara. In case if there is a sandstorm. Anastasia's turn. Can you hold this? Yes, I can. <laughs> Stop laughing. Can you, can you let me do my job? <laughs> our headscarves are on, water bottles are filled up. It's time to meet our camels. The camels there, they are very nice animals, but if you try touching their mouth or face, they don't like it, okay? They could bite you. Mm. They are vegetarians, but they will bite you. Okay, oh, you hold on oh. and lean back. And then that's it. Wow, you are tall. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, oh he's tiny compared to the other one. This is the tallest I've ever been. I'm now on my camel. Mikey's also on his camel. <laughs> Anastasia's on her camel. Mine just did away. Yours is trying to chat up my camel, and my camel's having none of it. Sorry. What day is it today? Oh, isn't it hump day? <laughs> yeah, apparently nobody found that joke as funny as I clearly did, so let's move on. Actually pretty comfortable, although this is like the first five minutes, so I'm sure after an hour I won't be saying the same thing. It's very, very similar to like horse riding, but I would actually say at right now it seems to be more comfortable. You're just kind of at a higher height. Oh, I don't see you around here. Do you come here often? Yeah, it's my first time in a Sahara Desert. I uh, love the look of your humps, uh, if you don't mind me saying. Do you work them out a lot? No? Nah, I don't really go to the gym that much. Our camel journey took around one hour and it's hands down the most picturesque and beautiful commute I've ever had the pleasure of taking. We were in the Erg Chagaga dunes surrounded by a seemingly endless ocean of sand and towering dunes up to 150 meters high. Even though the desert was right in front of us, the view didn't seem real. It felt like we were in a completely different world altogether. James has just ordered beer to his camel. Wow. Olden day Uber. Oh, hey, Christy. Hey. How are you enjoying it? It's very peaceful, actually. Not yeah. nearly as uncomfortable as people made it sound. Right? Yeah, I enjoy it. My camel seems pretty calm. Mine is James trying to irritate it. I think my camel just farted, but 
we are still going. Oh yeah, sure you can, we're definitely pass it. Yeah, can you smell it? <laughs> Just so you know. Yeah. Sure. It's pretty pungent. Guys, you're having a fun time? You are! <laughs> this is amazing! Ah! James's camel is currently trying to touch up Bev's butt. We're coming down. Thank you guys for looking after us. Bye. Bye. Shoot, let's start Bye with you. Susan. How was it? That was absolutely incredible. It wasn't as com uncomfortable as I thought. Yeah. It was actually pretty chill, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, seeing yeah. like the shadows of all the camels against the sand dunes and yeah. the sun is setting and everyone's the there. Over well. It's literally like unlike anything I've ever done. It's so good. <laughs> This was so special. This was honestly like such a surreal experience. I mean, look at the view though. This is the view that we're seeing right now. So we're about to walk up to yeah. that sand dune to see the sunset. Sorry. It's all right. Oh, this feels amazing. Just don't stand on camel oh, poop. Camel poop. <laughs> yeah. Apart from that. Yeah. Oh, it feels so warm under our feet. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> We took off our shoes, climbed up the highest sand dune and we watched the sunset over the desert. This was a really special moment. This is what it's about. We have three tables made up outside in our campsite. We've got the restaurant like cooking bit in here. We've got a few lights. These are our tents. <gasps> Look at the sky! And that's our tent here. And then we're just going to be chilling here. We've got some soup being served. And honestly, I'm so happy right now. Are you happy? Your lens is not fully open. Oh. <laughs> What I didn't film was Anastasia and I taking some time out from the group as the day really started to sink in for the both of us. It sounds cheesy but at that moment I truly felt so lucky to be alive and to experience this with such an incredible group of people. It was this moment as we were singing and dancing by the campfire under a blanket of stars that made me really value human connection more than ever. now and this is a breakfast selection got some boiled eggs my fave got some yogurt laughing cow cheese melon and a selection and of sugar. bread it's actually recording oh <laughs> good morning good morning it is now about seven o'clock approaching seven o'clock felt like the last time i filmed something last night was when we were all dancing around the campfire and i actually didn't film as much as I thought, even though the most magical things happened after I stopped filming. We were all sitting around the campfire just having a drink and chatting and then Carl suggested us to go up the sound dune and watch the stars whilst listening to Hans Zimmer. It was actually like one of the best nights of my life. Obviously I cried. We were listening to like Interstellar, we were listening to Time in Inception, Now We Are Free, like all those classics, I was watching the stars and I saw my first shooting star, I saw two shooting stars and the mosquito was trying to come and it was honestly one of the most magical nights of my life I think and then afterwards we came back down and we got all like blankets and sheets and just lay down watching 
like the stars. I kept waking up thinking there's like a big light shining in my face and waking up and seeing it was the moon and the stars was pretty spectacular. Those three dots in the distance, that's where we were last night actually when we were watching the stars. So we've got Carl, I think, Mikey and Charlie. This is where Charlie and I slept last night. Got some pillows, some sheets, and we're literally just watching the moon up there all night. And it was actually not as uncomfortable as it looks, although it was very, very hard. Woo! Just gone. Michael also died for it. Oh, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> Morning. High risk, high reward. How was your experience? Um, it was pretty much exactly what I wanted, which was perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I was nearly got workout. hit by a frisbee. The camel ride was perfect, amazing sunset on the sand dune, songs around the campfire. Not cheesy come by our songs, I mean like, you know, play traditional songs and dancing. And then we all lay down on the dune, watch the stars. She cried. I did. She cried. Tears of joy. Not, Tears of joy, yeah. <laughs> not like, this is so terrible. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> Fuck you, Carl. You're oh. All right, we gotta go. Okay, Hamid is calling. Come on. <laughs> Got our bags. And we're packing the sand dunes back. I mean, it's not dunes, it's a four by four. So, I was like, packing the sand dunes back up. <laughs> Shukran. And that is the end of the Sahara trip. We are back in the four by four. All packed up and we said goodbye to our camp, which is really nice. We were about to go, and then Hamid shouted at us to come out to watch the sunrise. Wow, it's so, so beautiful. How do you feel, Hamid? I am uh, fantastic, actually. I, could, I couldn't uh, express the, my feeling here in the Sahara Desert with the sunrise. You see, uh, you, the color of the sand dunes is a, a golden color you know yeah. the color of the tent <laughs> with the with the the princess of uh, england actually and my harem last night is just incredible you know <laughs> the night the night in the sahara we are uh, more than happy okay it's pokemon back to the pokemon the secret Charlie, how did you sleep last night? Oh, like an angel. I slept really, really well. It was so fresh. Yeah. You could see all the stars. Yeah, we did. We saw Ryan's belt this morning. Yeah, that's why it's, such, it's so different on like, people's timelines though, because people's priorities are different. And I feel like in London, people generally prioritise their work life over. Like, so we've stopped off at this place. This is a restaurant called Titanic. And apparently, all of this bit here to be a lake where there were birds and things but it dried up in 1975 I believe. Hamid! Hamid! What was the uh, lake called? Eriki. Eriki. I-R-I-K-I. -I -I. Eriki Lake. And it dried up in? It dried up in because of the big dam that was built in Warzazat 1975. Mm. Before that it used to be a very ecologic uh, place for birds, for fish, but once they build that dam, it's all dry because they really need dam for the people living in the valley for their drinking water, irrigation, oh. and also for the high, hydraulic track. Mm. So this is why they build the dam. Any question? <laughs> no, we're just a fountain of knowledge. we are great. Thank you. <laughs> And that's the end of the Sahara vlog. I'm so happy I got to share such a special moment in my life with you. Next up, Essaouira, a laid back coastal town filled with sandy beaches, dramatic seascapes, and hundreds and hundreds of seagulls soaring right above your head. You'll know what I mean in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.